this is the first in a series of videos about electricity. During these videos, I'm going to be referring to a textbook. This is the textbook. This textbook is available as part of the Woolsey Hall Oxford AS Level Physics course. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to use a multimeter. You don't have to get your own multimeter. In fact, you may want to use a separate ammeter and voltmeter. This does have some advantages because you can use them simultaneously. While with the multimeter, you've got to do a bit of chop and changing, as you'll see in my videos. However, it is very useful to know how to use one. This is what my multimeter looks like. As you can see, there's a dial with lots of different functions. And there are two leads. Let's have a look at how this all works. This is the positive, the red is always positive, and this is the negative. Now, the negative one is the common, and that always goes in the middle. The red one can either go in this right one here, or this left one here. The reason why we end up sometimes having to use this one is because this is an unfused port, but that is a fused port. If we try using it as an ammeter for currents greater than 200 milliamps, then we're going to blow a fuse. If you do try reading large currents with this in here, all that's going to happen is you're going to have to replace the fuse. It's not the end of the world. However, unless you've done the calculations and it's pretty evident that the values are going to be less than 200 milliamps, I suggest trying it in the unfused port first and then moving down to the fuse port. This can also be used as a voltmeter and an ohmmeter. For both of these uses, we use this fused port here. As an example of using multimeter as an ammeter, we're going to do the experiment on page 120 of the textbook. The ammeter is placed in series with two resistors. The dotted ammeter symbols represent where the ammeter is moved to in the three steps of the experiment. These are the two resistors used in the experiment on page 120. One of them is 100 ohms and one of them is 47 ohms. How do I know that? I know that by looking at the coloured bands. This table shows what each of the colours stand for. The first three bands make up a number. For example, 470 is yellow, violet, black. Although I don't know about you, but I think that looks more like a lime green than a yellow. But trust me, it's meant to be yellow. Anyway, the next band is the multiplier. Gold is 0.1 ohms. 470 times 0.1 ohms is 47 ohms. That is a 47 ohm resistor. The brown band on the far right is the tolerance. All of my resistors have a tolerance of plus or minus 1%. This doesn't look as nice as the circuit diagram, but I have tried to arrange it so that it's similar. For example, here's the positive terminal of the battery, the positive terminal of the multimeter, the negative terminal of the multimeter, the 100 ohm resistor, the 47 ohm resistor and the negative terminal of the battery. It says on page 120 to put it in the 200 milliamp range. So that's what I'm going to do. Since we're using just a 1.5 cell and the resistors are approximately 147 ohms in total, we're not going to get very high currents, so it's fine to use the unfused port. In fact, if you have a look, you can see that the multimeter reads 9.9 .9 milliamps. I'm just going to press down the terminals because the connection doesn't always seem to be great with this particular multimeter. There we go, yes, 9.9 .9 milliamps. Now the multimeter has been placed in the X position, which is between the 100 ohm resistor and the 47 ohm resistor. Here's the 100 ohm resistor. 
Here's the 47 ohm resistor. Again, we're going to put it in the 200 milliamp range. You'll see again the current is 9.9 .9 milliamps. Finally, the ammeter is in the Y position, which is next to the negative terminal of the battery. If we put it in the 200 milliamp range, again we get a reading of 9.9 .9 milliamps. Measuring the potential difference across a battery is a good example of using a voltmeter. Just like the ammeter, there are different settings depending upon the magnitude. A common one would be the 20 volt range. I'm not touching anything with a higher voltage than that. It's a 1.5 volt cell, so since that's less than 2 volts, but more than 200 millivolts, then we can put it in the 2 volt range. One point five two six. In the next video, there will be more examples of using a voltmeter. We can also use this multimeter as an ohm meter, which measures resistance. To use the ohm meter function, we just need to pick a range, which is two hundred ohms, and then put the terminals either side of the resistor, like so. This reads 99.2 ohms, which is 0.8% less than the 100 ohms, which is within the state of tolerance. This reads 46.8, which is also within the 1% tolerance. I really recommend that you try these experiments yourself. I've just done them at home, so you don't need a lab or anything like that. Before you do do anything though, please look at the safety video.